The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet, starring young America's favorite couple, Ozzie Nelson and Harriet Hilliard. As we look in at the Nelson household at 1847 Rogers Road, we find Ozzie and Harriet seated in the living room. Any mail today, Oz? Uh, yeah, it finally got here. Gee, the mail is certainly slow in this place, isn't it? I don't know why we have to live on the only street in Hollywood that won't give up the Pony Express. Well, it eventually gets here. Where is the mail? It's right here. There's a letter from my Aunt Belinda. It's there if you want to read it. Oh, what does it say? Is Uncle George all right? Yeah, he's working now. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Aunt Belinda says it's the best job he ever had. Uncle George makes fire extinguishers filled with gasoline. Fire extinguishers filled with gasoline? They're there for people with plenty of insurance. You've been at those joke books again, haven't you? Say, what are those big books over there? Oh, I sent for them. They just came in today, some of them. They look very interesting, too. Unusual titles, aren't they? Strange Woman, Strange Cargo. What's that one over there for? Well, that's a book on skin troubles. It's called Strange Mange. <laughs> Ozzy, stop making things up. Darling, when will you realize that you're married to a man with a mind like a steel trap? Oh, brother. <laughs> you know, honey, you should have been a master of ceremonies. I can just see your name up in lights in front of Slapsy Maxi. Ozzy Nelson, the only master of ceremonies with a steel trap mind and the fractured skull. <laughs> You know, there's a lot to this mental business, though. It's all explained in one of these books here. Life is a constant conflict, wherein the stronger mind controls the weaker mind. I'll bet that's what happened to my mind the night I said I'd marry you. <laughs> Are you kidding? Why, I just mumbled the question. It was practically inaudible. And you shouted, yes, so loud you scared the daylights out of me. Ah, uh, now that's where you're wrong. I remember it very distinctly. We were riding in the car and you kept saying, will you marry me? Will you marry me? And I kept shaking my head and shaking my head back and forth, back and forth. Oh, that time you had your nose caught in the windshield wiper and you know it. <laughs> You'll think differently about this mental business, though, when I hypnotize you one of these days. Hypnotize me? Since when have you been interested in hypnotism? Oh, ever since this book arrived. What book is that? This one here. It's called Strange Journeys into the Fascinating Fields of Hypnotism. Or how to tell your best friends before they tell you. <laughs> Hypnotism. Oh, Ozzy, do you really believe in that stuff? Of course I do. You know, I was once in the theater where a hypnotist called a guy up on the stage, and he hypnotized him. He made him cackle like a rooster, bark like a dog, even try to dig a gopher hole right on the stage. That ought to prove something. Well, it proves something, all right. It proves the guy was a big dope. I am not. <laughs> No, really, though, they're, they're doing some wonderful things with hypnotism lately. One professor spent two years hypnotizing a cat into thinking she was a dog and finally succeeded. Well, that sounds pretty interesting. What was the result? Well, nobody knows. She chased herself up a tree and never came down. <laughs> but, uh, but you know something, Harriet, from what I've read on the subject, I have a feeling that I might make a good hypnotist myself. Well, now that you mention it, when you were in college, weren't you voted the one most likely to put people to sleep? Okay, make jokes if you want, but I'll bet I can hypnotize you right now. And I've only read the first chapter. Come on, let me try. Huh? Oh, Ozzy, I'm too busy for such nonsense. Oh, come on, be a sport. Well, okay, go ahead. Well, you've got to cooperate, you know. All right, what do I do? Well, first, you've got to make your mind a complete blank. <laughs> Oh, you want to start even, huh? <laughs> now, this is the way it's done. Look into my eyes. I am the master. I am your guiding light. Look at me. Look at me. Is that a word on your nose? <laughs> Now, please, Harriet, if you want to be hypnotized, you've got to concentrate. Okay, I'm concentrating. Fine, here we go now. Mumbo jumbo, hambo bambo, bobo lobo. You are going to sleep. You are going to sleep. Watch me closely. 
Mumbo Jumbo Hambo Bambo Uh... Bobo Lobo. Uh, uh, <laughs> Bobo Lobo, you are going to sleep. You are going to sleep. Oh, 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 yes. Oh, yes. Stare into my eyes. I am your master. I am your guiding light. I am your Svengali. You're nuts. <laughs> I'm going out in the kitchen for a cup of coffee. Why don't you read the book over a few more times, Sonny? Oh, I want to get somebody to hypnotize while it's fresh in my mind. Say, maybe Gloria... Could... No, no, you don't now. Gloria's busy in the kitchen cooking dinner. Oh, gosh. And I've got things to do, too. I'll be back later. Gee, I wonder why that didn't work on Harriet. I guess she must have too much willpower to be hypnotized. I'll bet I could hypnotize Gloria, though. I think I'll try, only this time I'll use a subtle approach. Oh, Gloria! Gloria! Did you call me, Mr. Nelson? <laughs> yes, I did, Gloria. Uh, how's dinner coming? Oh, pretty good. I'm bashing the potatoes now. Oh, no, you mean mashing the potatoes, don't you, Gloria? No, I was bashing them. Can I help it if I have a nasty temper? <laughs> Now, I don't want to take up too much of your time because I know you're very busy out there in the kitchen. Yes, and I'm having a lot of trouble with that turkey I'm cooking. Oh, really? Yes. Every time I start to close the oven door, he looks at me as if to say, Don't fence me in. <laughs> oh, that's just your imagination, Gloria. Yeah, maybe it is. I have such a vivid imagination, Mr. Nelson. You know, I once thought I resembled Dorothy Lamour. Dorothy Lamour? Isn't that silly? <laughs> and all along, I'm the spitting image of Lana Turner. <laughs> you know, Gloria, I saw a little glint in your eye this afternoon, and I was thinking maybe you're preparing some special surprise for me. Well, I was going to make you one of my cocktails. I call it the Gloria Special. Oh, really? How do you make it? Well... First, you take a very large glass. Yes. Then you pour in two quarts of gin. Yes. That's all. You mean that's all, brother. <laughs> Gloria, I'll tell you what I really wanted to talk to you about. Uh, what do you know about hypnotism and clairvoyance? Not very much, Mr. Nelson. I always listen to Abbott and Costello. <laughs> No, Gloria, hypnotism is the power to make people realize their secret ambitions. For instance, how would you like to become Betty Grable? Betty Grable? That's right. In five minutes, I could convince you that you are Betty Grable. You might convince me, Mr. Nelson, but my legs would never believe it. <laughs> if you only had a secret ambition, Gloria, I could hypnotize you right into it. Oh, but I have. I always wanted to be a great dramatic actress like Ethel Barrymore. Well, wonderful. Why didn't you say so? I'll tell you what you do. Now, you just relax and you look at me. Look me right in the eye. Mumbo jumbo. Hambo bambo. Bobo lobo. Repeat after me. I am a great dramatic actress. You are a great dramatic actor. So you do like Abbott and Costello, don't you? Oh, yes. Now, look me in the eye. <laughs> Repeat these exact words. I am making a great Shakespearean picture. Look me in the eye and repeat these exact words. I am making a great Shakespearean picture. The lights are on. The cameras are turning. The lights are on. The cameras are turning. Over in one corner. Quiet on the set. <laughs> Gee, I think I hypnotized her. Gloria? Gloria? Miss Ethel Barrymore, please. To be or not to be. Harriet, Harriet, come quick. I've hypnotized Gloria. I've hypnotized Gloria. <laughs> Ozzy, 
After all, fun is fun, but it's been three hours since she hypnotized Gloria, and she still thinks she's Ethel Barrymore. Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? Oh, dear. Can't you possibly snap her out of it? Well, it says in the book to snap my fingers like this. Romeo, Romeo, climb up on the ladder, Romeo. <laughs> climb up on the ladder, Romeo. My joints are a little stiff, aren't they? <laughs> See, this is beginning to be serious. Let's get a professional hypnotist over here right away. Yeah, I'm afraid you're right. But what are we going to do with Gloria in the meantime? She's just standing there, stiff as a poker. Yeah. Yeah, she really is stiff as a poker, isn't she? Ozzy, what are you doing? I'm moving her over here. I think she'll look better next to the fireplace. <laughs> oh, Ozzy, stop prowling and let's get going. <laughs> Is this the place, Ozzy? Yes, it says Dr. Dipso. Come on, let's go in. How do you do? Something I can do for you? Hmm. Well, I... Uh, or would you I... rather come back sometime when your wife's not with you? Hmm. I, uh, I, uh, I, 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 I... <laughs> I, uh, we uh, we came to see Dr. Dipso. Yes, can the doctor see us right away? This is quite an emergency. Oh, well, I'm sure he'll be with you in just a moment. He's in the next room with some poor fellow who thinks he's an aeroplane. Uh, now, young man, uh, you're convinced that you're not a B-29. Oh, yes, doctor. I can't imagine how I ever thought I was a B-29. Oh, that's good. I feel so much better now that I know I'm a P-38. <laughs> well, goodbye, doctor. <laughs> Young man. <laughs> and uh, now, what can I do for you? Well, we've come to you with a very urgent case, Doctor. You see, it's the result of a hypnotic spell that caused some sort of an awful stupor. Oh, yes, a pitiful case. You poor man, what is your name? <laughs> no, no, not me. We're here together. You see, Dr. Dipso, my husband here hypnotized our cook, Gloria. Now we can't snap her out of it. And we thought we could get you to come over to the house and help us. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, uh, nurse. Yes, Dr. Dipson. Nurse, I'm going to be busy for a while. Will you call Dr. Kildare, Dr. Brent, Dr. Christian, and Dr. Gillespie? Have you got that? Yes, you want me to call Dr. Kildare, Dr. Brent, Dr. Christian, and Dr. Gillespie. What shall I tell them? Tell them the poker game is off. <laughs> Doctor, this is Gloria, the young lady who's in the trance. Hmm. How can you tell? Well, Roman, countryman, lend me your ears. See what I mean, Doc? You know, this case looks like a distinct schizophrenic tendency with delusions of grandeur and manic depressive syndromes. I believe there's been only one other case like it in medical history. Oh, really? Yes. But don't worry, I'm cured now. <laughs> You see, Doc, she thinks she's Ethel Barrymore. Well, let's see what we can do. Mumbo jumbo, hambo bambo, bobo lobo. See, Harriet, the doctor used the same words I do. Ipso facto foomp. <laughs> yeah, plus a couple he carved out of his own head. You think you can do anything for a doctor? Oh, I think so, Mrs. Nelson. You see, hypnosis is merely the power of the forceful mind over the weak mind. Just watch a moment and you'll see how strong my mind is. Gloria, look into my eyes. You are not a dramatic actress, you hear? You are not Ethel Barrymore. Jumbo, Jumbo, you are Gloria. Mumbo, Jumbo, I'm Ethel Barrymore. <laughs> Hambo, Bambo, you are Gloria. Hambo, Bambo, I'm Ethel Barrymore. Now comes the supreme test. I must have absolute quiet. You'll be quiet. Now, Gloria, Bo, Bo, Lobo. You are now Gloria. Lobo, Lobo, I am now Gloria. It works. Gloria's okay. Oh, that's wonderful. Thanks a million, Dr. Dipso. Dr. Dipso, there must be a mistake. I am not Dr. Dipso. Then who are you? Silly boy, don't you recognize me? I am Ethel Barrymore. <laughs>
got a gal who's always late Anytime we have a date But I love her Yes, I love her I'm gonna walk up to her gate And see if I can get it straight Cause I want her I'm gonna ask her Is you is or is you ain't my baby The way you're acting lately makes me doubt You is still my baby, baby Your heart done gone out A woman is a creature That has always been strange But when you're sure of one you find She's gone and made a change Is you is or is you ain't my baby Maybe babies found somebody new Or is my baby still my baby true? How can you talk like that? Maybe baby's found somebody new. Oh, me, oh, my, you know that ain't true. Oh, he's my baby, still my baby Getting back to Ozzie and Harriet, it seems that Ozzie got more than he bargained for when he started fooling around with hypnotism. Harriet, who knows her husband only too well, is a little worried that he may do some more experimenting in this unusual field. So, let's see what happens next. Ozzie Nelson, look, I want you to promise me one thing, that you'll never hypnotize anyone again. You promise? Yes, with two exceptions. You mean you have two people you want to get under your spell? Yeah, Lana Turner and the head of the gasoline board. <laughs> Oh, that's silly. Really, though, you know, you can get yourself into a lot of trouble by being so positive about these things. Now, you know as well as I do that you wouldn't want me to have a negative outlook on life. Well, it might be a lot safer. Darling, let me pass on to you a little solid philosophy that I recently heard. Such as, for instance... You gotta accentuate the positive, eliminate the negative... Latch on to the affirmative. Don't mess with Mr. In Between. You gotta spread joy up to the maximum. Bring gloom down to the minimum. Have faith or pandemonium's liable to walk upon the scene. To illustrate my last remark. Jonah in the whale, Noah in the ark. What did they do just when everything looked so dark? Man, they said we gotta accentuate the positive, eliminate the negative, latch on to the affirmative, don't mess with Mr. In Between. Don't mess with Mr. In Between. To illustrate. 
stray. My last remark, Jonah in the well, Noah in the ark. What did they do just when everything looked so dark? Man, they said we got a accentuate the positive, eliminate the negative, latch on to the affirmative, don't mess with Mr. In-Between, don't mess with Mr. In-Between. Won't you come in? Oh, yes, thank you, Harriet. We can only stay a moment. Roger, take off your hat. Yes, my dear. (laughs) I just love your new furs, Mrs. Waddington. Oh, thank you. They're an anniversary present. Oh, they're very pretty. What kind of fur are they? Weasel, I think. Roger, didn't these furs come from a weasel? Uh, Yes, my dear. I gave them to you yesterday. (laughs) As a matter of fact, we're on our way to the dress shop now. Roger wants me to buy a few new dresses, some new shoes, and a new coat. Don't you, Roger? Yes, my dear. (laughs) Aren't you going to buy anything, Roger? Well, there is something I wanted to buy, but uh, she won't let me. Oh, why not? Is it too expensive? Well, I don't know. Uh, How much does a bubble dancer cost? (laughs) Well, hello, folks. How are you? Oh, hello. Ozzy's had a pretty hectic day today. He's been fooling around with hypnotism. Hypnotism? Pure nonsense. Well, that's what I thought, too, until he hypnotized Gloria. Sure, it's really much easier than you think. All it takes is a little practice and a strong mind. Well, I ought to make a good hypnotist because I have a very strong mind. You do? Yes. Of course, it's in escrow now. (laughs) Say, you know, I have an idea. Why don't I hypnotize you, Roger? Oh, stuff and nonsense. Oh, now, Ozzy, haven't we had enough for one day? Roger, what would you like to be more than anything else in the world? Single. (laughs) No, really, Roger, I have a wonderful idea. I don't think I'm going to like this. Me either. Roger, look me in the eye. Mumbo jumbo. Hambo bambo. Bobo lobo. You are no longer a mouse. You are a lion. A ferocious lion. Roger. Roger, there's a strange look in your eye. What's the matter, Roger? Shut up, you old goat. <laughs> oh! Roger, Roger, what's come over you? This is your little wifey, your little dream kisser. Dream kisser? That's what you've always called me. And you know why? I never dreamed anybody could have such a kisser. <laughs> Why, you don't know what you're saying. Yes, and you can go shopping by yourself because I'm going to meet the boys and play poker. Over my dead body. Nothing could make a nicer table. (laughs) Ozzy, Ozzy, what have you done to my dear little husband? Gosh, I sort of hypnotized him, I guess. I am a lion. (laughs) And you are a helpless little lamb. Roger, don't don't look at me that way. Ah, Roger, stop saying I am a lion. I'm going to tear you apart. Get up off that floor and come home with me this instant. Is that clear, Roger? Roger. (laughs) Ozzy, I thought you said I was supposed to be the lion. Well, that's hypnotism, Roger. Well, this has really been a mad day, hasn't it? It certainly has. And I hope this has taught you a lesson not to fool around with hypnotism and things you don't know anything about. Well, you're a fine one to make speeches about hypnotism. You of all people. What do you mean, me of all people? I never hypnotized anybody. Oh, no, you can tell that to others. But you can't tell that to me. Because I was there when you hypnotized them. Yes, sir. 
The first time you looked at me, dear, I was lost in a dream. When you smiled, I just melted away. And I hope I remain under your spell for the rest of my life. <laughs> well, one thing is certain. I sure am glad we got Glory out of that spell. Yeah, you know, I was really getting worried about her. Thank goodness she's perfectly normal again. Yeah, she snapped out of it fine. Say, isn't it about time that she announced dinner? Mm-hmm. Practically ready. She'll announce it any minute now. Come on, ye for whom the bell tolls. <laughs> All I can say is I hope Ethel Barrymore can cook. Forces Radio Service.